Hey everyone, Dan here. We are after market close on Wednesday, July 28th. We're going to take a look at Tilray. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. And also keep in mind that these are my own thoughts, opinions, and ideas. These are not intended to be, nor should you take them as investment or trading advice in any way, shape, or form. Do your own due diligence, put the work in, and make your own decisions based on that. All right, so Tilray had a phenomenal day today after a surprise earnings report. Uh, if we flip over here, I'm sure we can see something about this. Uh, after it swings to a surprise profit and targets $4 billion in revenue by 2024. It's obviously $4 billion in revenue in just a few years with its current market cap being seven, and even that's after the big punch up today. Uh, so really a lot of upside that folks are seeing in Tilray at the moment. And obviously since this beatdown that it has occurred this, or I guess endured this year, certainly a, a, a lot of space to crawl back from and, and a lot of areas to retrace back to. Now, the volume obviously coming up quite a bit from the interest. A big question in my mind will be, can it sustain anything similar to this volume? We see 115 coming in today, but even on these days when it had some pretty solid volume, you see it in the in the 80s, well into the 80s of millions, and even on the next uh, highest days in the 60s and 70s of millions. So versus the space down here where it's kind of in the 20s and the teens, and so if there's really going to be sustained effort here, to me, that's going to be a big piece of the puzzle. Now, there are some interesting zones coming up. You see all of this previous buying and selling, or I should say support and resistance in this zone right here. This, to me, it's hitting a really key area. You see resistance here and resistance here, previous support here, support here, resistance that flipped to support here, resistance, support that flipped to resistance. These areas that encompass both previous support and resistance are really, really critical to future price activity because there is or there has historically shown to be a lot of supply and demand in those zones. So when you're sort of hitting your head on a resistance level, that's where there's a lot of supply. And so there's a lot of folks who are willing to sell. That's what the supply is. That they're like, okay, this is a good place for me to lock in profit. And they're happy to, to do that there. That creates the supply. Now, the demand created when you're coming down and you catch some support here, when this hit this zone, at this point, there was a lot of demand for it at that price level. So there was a lot of buy orders waiting, or there was a lot of folks who were looking at it saying, okay, I think that this could be a good dip by opportunity. Obviously, that didn't play out for them at that time, but it still shows that there is significant supply and demand in those zones. So question at the moment will be, how many folks are happy to take this profit, whether they locked in all 25% today or not, meaning whether or not they caught that entire move, or maybe even more, maybe if they bought in at 12.54 the other day, um, you know, or if they're still trying to claw back from when it was in the 20s over here, which was not that long ago. Um, just about six or seven weeks. Sorry, I'm a little under the weather today. So I know I keep kind of continuing to clear my throat. So apologies, there's not much that I can do about it, but um, just trying to power through at the moment. But anyway, uh, that'll be what I'll be looking for. Now, if it does need support to the downside, there is some really solid support around here. You see this previous resistance, previous support. So that should be a, a decent support zone for it. And even then, this is could probably come up a bit more because to me, actually this flipping from support to resistance is better and that still relatively lines up well with the support that was secured here that, that then gave it a push off zone. So closer to the 15 zone and also that 15 level, much like the 16 level is right now, sort of just that round number is kind of a psychological um, situation, sort of a, a trading psychology <laughs> uh, that unfolds at that price point, just knowing that you're crossing over a barrier right now. You're into the 16s, now you're into the 17s. Um, same thing with that. Oh, now we're falling below 15. And then some folks might might sort of come in in droves and say, ah, okay, this stock doesn't belong in the 15s and, and help drive it back up into the 16s and beyond. But that's what I would look for. And then additionally to the upside, I think where Tilray is likely to hit some stickiness would be right around here. And for the same reason, I won't keep pointing out all the previous support and resistance zones, but where these overlap with each other is 
the interesting place. Uh, here could have some, and then there could be some relatively tight zones in here. I mean, though, change of a couple bucks is almost a 10% change, so that's not actually that that tight. It just looks like it is from a dollar perspective, but percentage-wise, those are still good gains. You might have a decent run room here. Um, though you might hit some stickiness there. So it looks like basically every couple of dollars or every like 8 to 10% or so on the way up. But that leaves a ton of run room in, in various areas. Now, just to not be too crazy on focusing on the upside, I would say on the downside, there should be an additional support level right around there, mid-13s, if it needs it, as it you know potentially takes a breath. We see it has this wick poking out the top of the candlestick today, so it did peel back a little bit at some point during the day today. Now, if we zone in on the five-day chart and see this run up today, obviously looking like it could be establishing itself. Uh, there's this major parabolic move, obviously. Oh, what's happening here? This is a major parabolic move that happened earlier in the day, but it could be establishing, it's establishing itself a bit of a channel here. Let me actually rejigger this a little bit. This will better capture where it is. And if it could consider sustaining this channel, that would obviously allow it to blow through a bunch of those price zones to the upside. Now, it's only been in here for a portion of a day. So don't take this, like this channel could just very easily, this could be non-existent in an hour. It could already be out of the channel. But if it does continue to hold it, then it gives you know the opportunity to play the channel, buy the dips at the bottom, take profits at the top, rinse and repeat for the duration that it holds the channel. Just keep in mind also, let's pretend that this holds this channel for the rest of this week. Even if it does, all channels eventually break. So like I said, this could be a non-existent channel by morning and then we we'll just delete it. But uh, if it does hold it, eventually all channels break. So be very cautious as you're dip buying the bottom and just know that at any, any point it could fall out. And same thing to the upside. It could have another parabolic move up and just go, just go nutty to the upside there. Um, on the indicator side of things, just to sort of take into effect, let's pull back a bit here and take the last month into consideration because of all of this selling off. So I, I don't doubt for a minute, obviously there was this surprise, great earnings and, and really solid guidance that were provided, but it's also in the broader context, we can actually pull this out more, of this enormous sell-off that it's had in the last few months, right? So thinking about all of the price that folks took off the table, all the higher prices that folks took off the table by continuing to sell down, there's obviously a chance for a larger reversal here because it, this chart would scream to anyone, no one was expecting a surprisingly good earnings report and, and great guidance from this co company, right? This is screaming like this company is really questionable and could go out of business. So being that the extent to which the market thinks now that that is not the case and that there is really a, a bunch of positive opportunity here, it could be a pretty substantial retracement. So MACD flipped pretty solidly at the moment, uh, and this is even on the two-hour chart. So this is obviously a, a bunch of great bullish momentum and still maintaining yeah, really maintaining the real estate between the MACD and the signal line. So not indicating at the moment that it's you know losing any pressure on the buy side. It'll be interesting to see what it does now that it's sort of spending a few hours consolidating in this range here. If it can continue to push or if it does start to peel off and, and lose a little bit of that buy pressure. On the MA side of things, you have now the price starting to establish over the 200, which then, in my opinion, puts it in an overall bullish trend. So this could be the move that flips Tilray from the bearish trend that it's been in since, by this criteria anyway, since the end of June, so for the last month or so, and brings it back to the bullish side of things. And also you see the 20 about to throw a bullish crossover on the 50. RSI, obviously pretty extended. Uh, this doesn't tend to really scare me off. What I mostly look for is if and when, and eventually it will, right? If and when 
Tilray RSI comes down and tests the midline. That's mostly what I'm going to be interested in seeing. When it comes down to about here, does it kind of establish some support and then make another run back up? Does it fall through and can't really build itself back up over the midline? If that's the case, then I'd probably be looking for it to come down into or very, very close to oversold. And then I'd be looking again to see what it does at the RSI midline to kind of make a decision based on that. So good prospects here, though, in my opinion. Uh, but it's always interesting to see how the market sort of digests some of these really large moves. That said, I mean, you know, it digested this large move down with just more moves down. And so that's why I say there's uni a unique opportunity, it seems, for this to pick up quite significantly based on the rapid beatdown that has occurred and that's gone on. Uh, I mean, in February, it had that run up to 77. And uh, I can't remember, there was some news about the UK or something. I can't remember what that was. I could be misremembering that. But I remember playing a portion of that run too. Let's flip over to the data really quickly. We see a bunch of upside here based on analysts. So to the extent to which you know, um, investors in retail or in institutions take what analysts say and kind of run with it. Some folks could be jumping in as they see still an additional 40 plus percent upside, uh, you know, with that target being at 1825 and this sitting just over 16 at the moment. And the, the thing that I would obviously kind of keep a pretty tight eye on would be where does the short interest go? So it ticked up a little bit today. Now, a bunch of these shorts are probably going to get burned, but keep in mind that if recent history has shown us nothing else, it's been that the shorts want to pile in at any sign of something that looks like this, and especially on any sign that it's being driven by retail, especially by way of Wall Street bets, which swaggy here you see, Tilray, the most commented on ticker, in Wall Street bets today. And so I would look for this estimate that Ortex currently has of about 9.5% of the free float being shorted. I would look for that to continue to tick up pretty significantly day over day. But then that just provides an added opportunity if Tilray can continue to push, obviously. But uh, this is obviously a uh, Shorts jumping in and trying to take advantage of what they're seeing as potentially an overreaction, potentially thinking that retail is relatively uh, sort of transient in their focus on, on stocks and will sort of give this a bunch of attention for a short period of time and then will sell off and lock in profits and that gives them an opportunity to pounce and drive the stock down further and so on and so forth. Uh, but this also feels like one of those situations where it's probably not shorts jumping in because the stock price based on the fundamentals is overvalued, which is what you always hear, right? It's sort of, we got a bunch of really good fundamentals today and where that means that that should land that market cap is the question, of course, right? But I, I don't like that talking point because I think that it's, it's really misused. Anyway, I would keep a strong eye on that short interest to see as it starts to balloon into the teens and then over 20 what Tilray is doing at that time is it succumbing to some of that pressure uh, is retail seeming to jump out and lock in profits anyway and then the shorts are continuing to drive that down and sort of pile on and cause that sell-off to accelerate or is it maintaining really strong upward pressure and momentum but then bringing into play the possibility of a squeeze of some sort but that's very difficult to effectuate and wouldn't be something that would come into play for quite some time. But I would suggest keeping an eye on it if you're in this one. Well, I hope you had a great trading day today. If you're in Tilray and you didn't just chase it and buy at the top, then <laughs> hopefully you did have a really good day. But uh, an interesting week, and we'll see what the rest of it brings. I appreciate you watching, and I will see you in the next video.